Two of WWE's most influential creative forces, Bruce Prichard and Michael Hayes, are currently on temporary leave, as initially revealed by Dave Meltzer. While their return is anticipated, no specific timeline has been set. According to Meltzer's report, Hayes is dealing with personal issues, whereas Pritchard has stepped away due to a family emergency. WWE officials have emphasized that their absences are unrelated, shutting down rumors that this signals any broader change in leadership. Both Pritchard and Hayes are expected to resume their duties when ready. Michael Hayes, who has been instrumental to WWE since the 1990s, has held various roles as an on-screen personality and a behind-the-scenes producer. He has recently played a critical part in developing the Bloodline storyline, working hand-in-hand -hand with Paul Heyman on segments featuring Roman Reigns. His absence was especially noticeable at WWE Crown Jewel, where James Gibson stepped in to oversee the Bloodline's match, sparking speculation about Hayes' leave. Bruce Prichard, a WWE veteran whose contributions date back to 1987, has had multiple tenures with the company, helping craft some of its most iconic moments. His expertise and influence have left a lasting imprint on WWE's creative and production landscape. While fans eagerly await their return, the impact of both Pritchard and Hayes continues to be felt, shaping the stories and characters in ways only seasoned veterans can. WWE and Vince McMahon are once again facing legal trouble as a new lawsuit has been filed by Leland Owens. In the suit, dated November 4th, Owens accuses WWE of using his creative ideas without proper payment or acknowledgement. He claims that his contributions were used under a verbal agreement, but alleges that he never received the compensation or credit he was promised. This latest legal action follows a prior complaint from Owens that was dismissed because of insufficient financial evidence. Now with a stronger case, Owens argues that high-profile WWE figures, including Stephanie McMahon and Daniel Bryan, mentioned in the lawsuit, were aware of and involved in the unauthorized use of his intellectual property. A particularly striking allegation in the lawsuit states that WWE attempted to pay Owens hush money to keep quiet about the matter. Owens claims that this offer was made through Mercedes Monet, formerly known as Sasha Banks, who allegedly acted as an intermediary on behalf of WWE. Owens is seeking a massive $500 million in damages, a demand that highlights the gravity of his accusations. If his claims hold up in court, WWE might be forced to reevaluate how it handles creative input from external sources and tighten its policies on intellectual property rights. The case also has the potential to empower other creators who feel their contributions have been unfairly used. WWE has yet to issue an official statement regarding these allegations. The unfolding legal drama could have far-reaching consequences, possibly setting a new precedent for how major entertainment companies manage ideas and creative relationships with independent collaborators. Let us know your thoughts about this ongoing situation in the comments below. QT Marshall, a key figure in AEW since its early days, chose to leave the company when his contract ran out last year. While some speculated he might reunite with Cody Rhodes and join WWE, Marshall ultimately returned to AEW in a new capacity. He recently confirmed he did engage in talks with WWE, but the experience left him less than impressed. Throughout his tenure with AEW, Marshall has taken on numerous roles, from wrestling and managing to producing, and now serving as vice president of show and creative coordination. Many fans agree that his current responsibilities highlight his strengths. In an interview with Steven Mulhausen of the Takedown on Sports Illustrated, QT Marshall discussed why AEW remains the right place for him. I make too many contributions to the point where no one has a clue what to do with me, which is why I fit in so well at AEW because I don't have just one role, he explained. Marshall shared that working for WWE was once his dream job, but that desire has since faded. Reflecting on Cody Rhodes' move to WWE, he recalled telling Tony Khan, I'm never going to leave AIDW to go work in the office at WWE. I just won't do it. That's such a large system. I'm like Tony's right-hand man, so why would I leave to go be number 7,000 in a company, work more hours, more days on the road, just to say I work for WWE? Marshall emphasized that his views might have been different if the WWE conversation had focused solely on wrestling. Like 20 years ago, of course, 
I would have done anything to work for WWE, he noted. If they came to me and we spoke about just being a talent on the main roster, of course. I mean, that's the dream. After his AEW contract ended, Marshall did have one discussion with WWE in early 2024. However, the interaction left him feeling uneasy. He had already begun talking with Tony Khan about a potential AEW return, so the WWE offer had to be convincing. According to Marshall, it wasn't. I had one conversation with somebody that doesn't even work there anymore, he revealed. I just got rubbed the wrong way during the conversation. It was like, hey, yeah, oh yeah, that's great, all right. I told him like, yeah, all right, we'll stay in touch. To me, it was like, I'm not staying in touch. He elaborated on his thought process saying, I had all that time between November and January, so that on January 1st, when that conversation did arise, or January 2nd, whenever it was, I kind of knew. Plus, I had already spoken to Tony before that, so I kind of knew. I think I was just looking for a reason to say no. QT Marshall remains content in his AEW role, grateful for Tony Khan's trust and flexibility, which even allows him to wrestle for other promotions. For now, staying with AEW feels like the best fit for his career. Do you think QT Marshall could have thrived in WWE, or is AEW truly the best home for his many talents? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Today, Liv Morgan stands proudly as the WWE Women's World Champion. However, her journey with professional wrestling began more than two decades ago, when she was just a young girl seeking solace from a turbulent home environment. In a recent conversation on the Impulsive podcast, Morgan opened up about how WWE became her escape from the chaos that surrounded her upbringing, which she described as a crazy cycle of violence. I've been a fan of WWE since I was five years old, Morgan shared. My four older brothers were my role models, and I wanted to be just like them. Anything they liked, I liked, and that's how I got introduced to WWE. Growing up in a very chaotic and dysfunctional household, WWE was my escape. It didn't matter what was happening in the house, things breaking, objects being thrown, the police showing up. When WWE was on the TV, it saved me. I immediately fell in love with everything about it. The drama, the excitement, and the intensity. Morgan's childhood idol was WWE Hall of Famer Lita, and she has often called herself a tomboy, recalling how she and her brothers would wrestle in a makeshift ring. Years later, in a full circle moment, Morgan had the chance to share the squared circle with Lita. She competed alongside her hero in a 10-woman tag team match on WWE Raw in 2018 and again during the 2022 Women's Royal Rumble. Besides Lita, Morgan also admired legends like Stone Cold, Steve Austin, The Rock, and Paul Triple H Levesque. Now, as a champion, she finds herself under the guidance of Triple H, who plays a pivotal role in shaping the WWE product as chief content officer. The journey from being a young fan seeking comfort in wrestling to becoming a world champion is a testament to Morgan's resilience and love for the sport. 